Hello everyone and welcome. Hi everyone, welcome to your weekend edition, your special April 2nd Saturday weekend edition of Lunch Bites. I'm going to wait just a few minutes until everyone gets joined. Hello, Roxy Beauty. Thank you for joining the weekend edition today of Lunch Bites for your top eight news headlines. Hey, girl. Hello. Thank you for joining me. Just waiting a couple minutes for some other people to get joined. If you wouldn't mind, if you're on an iOS device, uh, you're getting ready for brunch too. Perfect. I'm going to give you some perfect talking points for that brunch. If you'll just swipe right and invite some followers that would be awesome so that everybody or if you're on an iOS or Android swipe up or down and invite some followers we're gonna go over the top eight headlines guys so that you have the perfect talking conversation for your lunch um, or brunch weekend weekend brunch conversations today so I would love it if you guys would share this broadcast invite some followers I would love that guys so that we can get everybody informed today it would make me very happy I'll give you a special shout out out. Thank you, Roxy Beautiful Invited Followers. Yay! Love you, Roxy Beauty. She just got a special shout out from me. I'd love you guys to get a special shout out as well. <clears throat> So I think we're going to go ahead and get going because we've got some stuff to talk about. Thanks, girl. You really make me very happy today. I'd love for the rest of you, if you're on iOS, like I said, just swipe right, click invite followers. If you're on Android, it's up or down and you click invite followers. If you are here and not following me, please do. I do a newscast every single day and we do the top eight headlines of the day. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's the weekend. I'm a little tired too, but we're going to pep up with some of these headlines and you're going to have something to talk about for all of your weekend conversation. So let's go ahead and get started, you guys. We're going to talk about headline number one. All right, let me make sure. Is my sound okay, guys? Give me on a scale of one to ten if my sound is okay. Because I just realized it, it may be kind of funky. Yeah, can you guys hear me? There we go. That should be better, yeah? All right, well, regardless, here we go. All right, guys, special weekend edition. It is April 2nd, Saturday, and here are your top news stories thanks to Refinery29. Number one, a new Ebola case has been confirmed in Liberia. Unfortunately, several months after the virus was thought to be contained. So we're overseas. There's a little bit of national news. Reuters has reported this. The victim unfortunately died on Thursday and it was a woman in her early 30s. It's the first confirmed case of the virus in Liberia since the World Health Organization, WHO, declared the country Ebola-free in mid-January of this year. The country has been declared free of Ebola twice before, in May and September of 2015, only to have new cases cropping up. So there's still um, stuff to be figured out there. Why is this happening? News of the latest death comes only after uh, th comes three days after WHO said the Ebola crisis was no longer a public health emergency of international concern due to dropping rates of transmission. So it looks like as soon as we took our eyes off of it, it popped up again. It really wants the spotlight. So, unfortunately, we start off with some sad news about that. Um, not much to say about that. More than 11,000 11, people, mostly from West African countries, um, have died in 2014 from the outbreak. So, thankfully, the numbers are down, but we definitely don't want to see this, them spike again. So, we're hoping this was maybe just a a freak accident and that it will not start to spread. So that was headline number one international. Let's come back home, more national news, where we are going to be talking a little politics, not a whole lot, but um, meet the man behind the viral hashtag you may have seen, hashtag 
Bernie made me white, proving that Sanders fans are more than just Bernie bros, as they have been called. So, throughout the 2016 election season, one narrative has played out repeatedly. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders can't relate to black voters, it seems. Larry David impersonating Sanders even poked fun at it during Saturday Night Live skits saying his quote-unquote crush was quote every black person in America. So he's taken heat from a lot of um news sources, uh, well, faux news sources at SNL, um, a lot of social media. He's taken a lot of heat that he doesn't have that black support. Um, Sanders does not have strong support. Or, I'm sorry, Sanders does have strong support among largely white middle class voters, a fact that is highlighted by former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's backing from many African Americans. While Sanders won caucuses in Hawaii, in, in Hawaii, Washington State, and Alaska last weekend, some news, news organizations reported his wins and speculated it as being partly due to the state's small black populations. This didn't sit well with people of color who do support Sanders, uh, Sanders presidential campaign, and some took to Twitter to say so. Leslie Lee the third, a Sanders supporter who is black, created this hashtag. Again, it's hashtag Bernie made me white. Is uh, in what he told Refinery Twenty Nine was a bid to bring progressives of all races together in their discussion of the election. He said, and I quote, "There's a lot more to diversity than just African Americans." And that is, um, I'm sorry, um, he, he's saying that there's a lot more to diversity than just that, and that's happening in this election where everyone but the black vote in the South of people over 40 has basically been ignored by the media. That's what Lee said. He added that when the hashtag started trending on Twitter, it was used by African American, Hispanic American, and Native American people who support Sanders. So um, the founder for Latinas of uh, for Bernie, uh, to for supporters of Bernie, told Refinery29 that the notion Sanders doesn't r resonate with voters of color is quote a myth created purposefully uh, to not only discredit his campaign, but to use it as a tool to dis, to, to deter voters and, and to get them yeah, off his track, not voting for him, your basic politics. Um, we are here, we are brown, we support Bernie, and we aren't going anywhere. That's what the founder of Latinas for Bernie said, and I really liked it. It reminded me of Dr. Seuss's um, We Are Here um, uh, from the Who's on the, um, oh, with the elephant. I forgot that I've been from spacing on the name of the the cartoon, but when he wrote it, it was political, and it was it was at a time when it was actually in reference to the Japanese, but, but it can really be seen as satirical in a political piece to say, we are here, um, but we're being ignored, um, and and uh, we are being treated as if, you know, we're just, oh, we're not supporting him and all this kind of stuff. So I think it's an unfortunate thing that they're they're capitalizing on just to diminish his um, standing in this political race. I like to leave my personal opinion of politi politics in the kitchen. I'll leave, I'll leave that. My, my opinion comes on the side, but I'll leave politics in the kitchen. However, like I said, that's one that, um, I, I just, I don't like seeing it when these races get head to head and, and messy like this. So, but, uh, that is what is going on with Bernie, uh, after he won those three caucuses. So let's move on, guys. Headline number three has to do, again, with um, Saint Laurent. We talked about them, and I believe it was their heels, their nude um, flats collection that weren't just heels the other day. But now we're talking about a designer, the one who dropped um, the first word from that brand, um, 
is parting ways from them. So uh, let's find out a little more information about that. Um, what Yves Saint, Le Saint Laurent has achieved over the past four years represents a unique chapter in the history of the house. Uh, Keurig's chairman and CEO said in a statement, I'm very grateful to, um, I believe his name is Heidi C, uh, Slimane, uh, Heidi Slimane and whole Yves, uh, Saint Laurent team. Um, for having set the path that the house has successfully embraced, which will grant longevity to this legendary brand. So, um, it says that, um, the, the man who's leaving the company was thought to very feasibly be on his way out at the brand in mid January when word circulated that the designer hadn't yet signed a new contract with Keurig, which is the parent company. No word yet on his successor, although some people have been discussed. There's not an official person, and uh, the company will release further details about the brand's creative direction, presumably including a short-term interim plan of action um, shortly, per the statement. So it seems like um, they're not giving much explanation for why he's leaving or what happened. And usually that means it was not because of something good. So definitely leaving a lot of questions in people's minds for sure. All right, guys, let's move on to number four. Fast food employees took to Reddit to tell consumers what to never order. So as you guys are heading out to your lunch, this could definitely be a story you want to keep in mind. If you don't know what Reddit is, it's a very popular uh, blogging type uh, of uh, social media. And um, so I just wanted to share with you a couple of the things they said. Uh, maybe just keep us all a little healthier as we all go out for lunch. We all know we're not supposed to eat fast food, fast food even though it's insanely delicious, let's be real. But just as how certain people drink Mexican Coke, because it has real sugar and it's supposedly healthier than American Coke, which has high fructose corn syrup, we know that health um, healthfulness is relative based on what you find important and and uh, how your body needs to be treated, what kinds of things your body reacts to, etc. Which brings us to a recent Reddit thread that asked fast food workers, what should we never order? The whole discussion is a is full of stomach turning grossness, but let's just look at a few, you guys. I'm not gonna read you all of them. User hot potato, I, I think it's hot potato bow. They come up with some interesting usernames and handles, but they say that you should never get the chicken at Subway. The user said that, quote, at our Subway, the, quote, oven roasted chicken is actually boiled in a microwave. Don't know if that's just at their location, but food for thought. Uh, Reddit user Like a Baker has helpful tips for Starbucks, Starbucks fanatics. They say, quote, all Starbucks food is reheated frozen food. Uh, ridiculous how little people realize that. That doesn't mean it doesn't taste good. It's just not fresh at all and incredibly overpriced. However, I think a lot of people may realize that because it's in the little freezer thing and then they have to heat it up. But maybe because we love Starbucks, we just imagine that it's fresh. So just keep that in mind. It's not necessarily bad food, but it was frozen. Um, a, a couple of tips that are helpful for Chipotle addicts, which I know there's a lot of you out there listening. Um, so there, I think it's Courage Wolf is the handle. Quote, he says, or he or she says, I used to work at Chipotle and never, ever, ever order the tacos, they say. You get less than half the regular portions. So instead, they tell you, order a bowl with whatever you want in it, then ask for the taco shells, hard or soft on the side. So that's a nice little um, tip, little hack for Chipotle. I know that I personally came up with a few at Panda Express um, that are the same way as far as pricing. Also, as referring to Chipotle, um, SoFlo Paintball says that, but um, currently a service manager at Chipotle uh, is this person and they say all peppers, lettuce tom and tomatoes now come pre-shredded and washed. Steak is now pre-cooked, uh, well heated in hot water before shipped to us. 
re uh, really the only in-house prep we still do is dicing onions and jalapenos and making guac. Everything else is coming pre-shredded and ready to serve in Central Kitchen. So that's really not a bad thing they're saying. They're just saying it comes pre-done and it's not really cooked in-house per se, but they are reiterating that it is very well cooked before they get it. I really like the little tip that they said, a little money saver for you. I'll reiterate. So order what you want in a bowl and then ask for the taco shells on the side. I like that. Now, how about 7-Eleven? It says, um, if you were thinking about getting hot dogs um, at 7-Eleven, in parentheses, why would you be doing that? But it says to pay attention to the clock. The novelty bone, I believe, is the person who wrote this. Quote, I used to work at 7-Eleven, so I'm going to say any of the hot dogs around midnight up through about 4 or 5 a.m. Around midnight, you can be assured that these are now high mileage. The hot dog might have more miles than your car. So I'm assuming maybe the best time is after 5 a.m. Gotta run. Love the news, though. Hope your Saturday is great. Thanks for joining, Roxy. I hope that you have a little food for thought to talk about at your brunch. Great to have you joining us. We're almost done with the news, guys, actually, but I'm going to tell you the last few things just because I know that you guys, like me, you may be eating out this weekend. So um, for Burger King, um, it's not old until it's sold indeed. That's what they say is a helpful tip time for Burger King. So um, I have no idea how to pronounce S-H-M-A-N-D-A-M-E-Y-E-R. Yes, I want to give them credit, but don't know how to say their name. Uh, they say, if you're really short on time, don't count on chicken tenders or grilled chicken sandwiches or salads being made quickly at Burger King. I remember the tenders took forever to cook, and we didn't really make them that often, so most times they were made to order. Same for the grilled chicken. Everything else is whatever. I mean, not great. I'm substituting words there for uh, because it's Burger King, but it's what you should expect. Again, substituting some words. So they're just saying if you're in a hurry, uh, don't order the chicken tenders or grilled chicken sandwiches or salads. Also, a general tip for dining at places that don't fit the fast casual designation. Um, ANC6 writes, if you see something on the menu and can't find at least one or two other items that the ingredients could be used in, don't order it. For example, my restaurant has a pulled pork sandwich. We don't use the pork for anything else. Since it's not ordered too frequently, it's not fresh, and the product you're eating might be days or weeks old. It's not going to get you sick, but it definitely won't be as fresh as anything else on the menu. That's a really good point as well. So the final tip is for McDonald's. Um, R-A-J-C-6 writes, please do not order 35 McDoubles at a Walmart McDo McDonald's. They don't give any explanation. That's just what they say. And then they also say, as someone once, uh, or Populo writes, as someone once went through a drive through at 3 a.m. back when they were a dollar each, handed them a 20, and asked to be, I'm going to change some words here and say, hit up with some McDonald's. I apologize. Basically, use nice language. Um, that wasn't really a helpful tip, I don't think. But anyway, some of the others were. I think the most helpful one was Chipotle. So don't order the tacos. Order the stuff in the bowl and the tacos on the side. Save some money there. All right, so guys, let's move on. Let's move on to uh, headline number five. Confirming your theory. Music tastes do reflect personalities. Empathetic is Tremelo, as analytic is too energetic. So, of course, you know how to look up this a little bit. Uh, one in it said, wondering how to quickly get to know your next blind date? Well, new research released from the University of Cambridge might give you an idea. Talk about music. The findings suggest suggests that me a person's taste in music might say a lot about his or her overall personality. Now, we already know this, but here's some more in-depth information. For the initial study, which is still in progress, the researchers designed a thorough online quiz and distributed it to over 4,000 men and women between ages 18 and 61. I find that interesting. Not 60, but 61. 
um, years old via the My Personality Facebook application. Participants answer questions about their current mood, personality traits, and those descriptors, descriptors included things like extroverted, critical, anxious, sympathetic, reserved, things of that nature. And they read and uh, the way they read and control their emotions and the role that music plays in their lives. The participants then listen to 25 excerpts of music ranging from rock to smooth jazz to electronic and rated how they enjoyed that music. By comparing the music ratings to participants' personality traits, the, re the researchers found that people were more empathetic and conscious and, and, and conscientious of others' feelings were more likely to enjoy mellow and emotional music. So people who were more empathetic and conscientious, mellow, emotional music. Meanwhile, people who were more analytic or interested in critical thinking preferred more intense, energetic music. Interesting. David Greenberg, one of the lead researchers and a psychologist at Cambridge, tells CNN that people were more analytical, that the people who were more analytical may view music as a sort of puzzle for them to try to figure out, which could be why they prefer artists with more instrumentally complex, mu complex music, like Rage Against the Machine or Metallica. Correspondingly, more empathetic people may have gravitated towards artists with more emotional music, like Joni Michelle or Jeff Buckley, because they were more interested with the song's narrative. The research is ongoing and the quiz is available for anyone to take, including you. So we'll have to wait and see whether this connection changes or stays strong. At any rate, we're on the lookout for, if you're on the lookout for a partner who'd be a great listener, there's no harm in asking which artist he or she prefers, Adele or Guns N' Roses. Sure, this research isn't intended to be quite so practically um, applied, but you probably could glean something from it um, if they're obsessed with this or that, you know. But hey, at, least, at the very least, bringing up music will give you something to talk about if you're in need of an icebreaker. And again, that app on Facebook was called My Personality. That's lowercase m-y, capital P for personality, and it's one word. So if you want to go get that on Facebook and maybe take the quiz yourself, find a little bit about yourself out. All right, guys, so let's move on to the sixth headline. We're going to keep this one a little short because I wasn't quite sure how to address it, but I want to let you know about it. Uh, one gay man opens up about life with a black market butt augmentation. Yeah, this is the reason I didn't know how to address it. But, um, if you would like more information, you can go on Refinery21. The title of this story, uh, you can go to refinery29.com backslash AMP backslash butt dash implants dash personal dash story. It's called I Got Black dash market but and the story was told to Refinery21 and due to the sensitive and private nature of the topic, some names is from a butt augmentation. I was in a phase of my life in which I felt very confused. I would I think I was 20 and I knew I wanted to change myself. I was becoming comfortable with being gay, he says, but all of a sudden I felt this pressure about my appearance. Growing up, I never cared what I looked like because I was pretending to be straight, but it didn't bother me that I didn't get girls. But I can't, when I came out of the closet, everything snowballed. You're welcome to go on there and read the rest of the story. But what I got out of that, guys, is we really need to be careful how much pressure we're allowing ourselves to put on people when they're going through this. Because um, I noticed specifically it said black market injections, and that can really be unsafe. So I'm going to go ahead and move on from that story because I think just so much can be said about that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move on. So we are on headline number seven. Uh, again, something I'm not going to talk a whole lot about, but definitely something that could be fodder for your weekend conversation. Number seven, Flex is what it's called. It's a new menstrual barrier, and it's marked sex. Um, so I will just tell you a little bit about it, and you can do your own research if it's something of interest to you. It is a soft, disc-shaped menstrual barrier, and it wants to save you from the mess of period sex by blocking off your cervix. You can wear it for up to 12 hours, even though I hope that you're not um, engaging in that activity for that long. And <laughs> And with its sleek packaging and one-time use, it bears a stark resemblance to a condom. 
so they say. But it's really more of a soft period cup, like the aptly named soft cup, but it's meant to make period sex more like regular sex. Um, it's, if you're just tuning in, I'm reading the news headlines. This isn't my normal conversation. Uh, another very important difference, it doesn't work as a birth control method or help to prevent STDs as condoms do. So really it's only mission um, is just to help you be able to um, engage in sex while on your period and make it less messy. So like I said, if you want to read more about that, it is um, by, it is on Refinery29. The title is, This Tampon Alternative Wants to Make Period, period Sex Mess-Free. So feel free to research that all you want. Again, it's called Flex, and I'm going to let that be and move on to our very last headline, guys. It is uh, number eight, 15 of the best April Fool Day gags to laugh about over brunch. So I'm not going to go through all these 15. Um, I would love for you guys to be able to check them out. Um, the headline on this one, guys, is um, it's on Refinery29, and the headline is our favorite April Fool's Day gag. So you guys are absolutely welcome. Go check that out. But I had to share with you one thing on it that I thought was really interesting. And it's not necessarily a gag. It's true. So Zipcar is something kind of like Uber. You know, it's one of those car assistant things. Um, Zipcar's self-driving. Um, apparently, it's a self-driving car. I'm, I'm a little confused to the service, per se. But this is what I got a kick out of. Listen to this. Reserving zip cars just got much easier. Now all you need to do it with is a selfie. Guys, what a time to be alive. Oh, listen to this. The Zipcar app will use your selfie to help you find the best car for that day. If your selfie has multiple people in it, it'll pair you with a larger car. If you look stressed, it'll get you a comfier car. If you look super fly, it'll get you a special car from the brand new Diddy line. Sign up for one of those. Or sign us up for one of those. So I just, I thought that was great. Like somehow it's got an algorithm to gauge your face. Or maybe they've hired FBI, former FBI profilers to you know, look at your face. I don't know. I'd love to see the behind the scenes. But again, that zip car, if you want to look into that more. So that is your April 2nd special edition weekend Brunch Bites news of the day. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that helps you with some of your conversation fodder for the weekend. Of course, I am continuing my second series of hashtag alpha bites. I have posted it to Snapchat. I hope that you're following me there and that you saw the story. I will be posting it later today to Instagram because I wanted you guys to get the first look yesterday on Snapchat. Today is letter B. So I will be back later today to do that challenge with you. So you guys, you have a great Saturday, a great April 2nd, and I hope your weekend is fantastic. I will catch you later. Bye.